Hello guys and welcome to all those training to become Super Saiyans. This is Revolution. So on this video I'm going to be discussing Kefla's power and why it makes sense. This isn't going to be a popular topic because Kefla has the fan base divided concerning her popularity. Some people despise her, some people love her. That's not however quite what this video is about. What I've heard a lot in the community is a lot of people saying Kefla's power doesn't make sense. They can't believe that she can compete with somebody like a Super Saiyan Blue Goku. Never mind Goku's new Ultra Instinct form. Now, I said this quite a lot after the Dragon Ball specials and I felt this latest episode, episode 116 of Dragon Ball Super, gave merit to my claims. People went off the charts about Goku and Jiren's power in the specials. Sure, they were incredibly powerful, a lot more powerful than anybody in the tournament, but people claiming that they were outright stronger than a Patora fused character, making claims like they are far stronger than Merge Zamasu and even Vegito Blue. And it was all based off one very vague line by Shin, the Supreme Kai. Everybody was pretty much downplaying the power of a Patora fusion as if it was some sort of slight towards their new favourite characters, Jiren and Ultra Instinct Goku. But as I've advocated on this channel many times, Patora fusion, the fusion of the gods, is massive. That isn't a slight towards Jiren or Ultra Instinct Goku. For singular beings, they are incredibly powerful beings, especially for mortals. The super exciting guys say two things, multiplication for Vegito and closer to multiplication for everybody else. Patara is only one component to why Kefla's power makes sense and is stronger than you think. But just before we discuss those components, I'm just going to ask anybody new to this channel to please subscribe. This channel's been going around 10 months now. We're already at 6,000 subscribers. Help me on the road to 10,000 subscribers. Join the revolution. So for Kefla, we have to start obviously with the two fusies that made up Kefla, Khalifla and Kale. Now just like Goku and Vegeta, Khalifla and Kale are Saiyans, except they are Saiyans from a different universe. Now Goku and Vegeta for full-blooded Saiyans are pretty much phenomenons for their Saiyan race from Universe 7. You look at the rest of that race, or at least the ones we saw in Dragon Ball Z, including the likes of Raditz and Nappa, and you could even put Bardock in there. Despite once seeming fierce, the truth is their power pales in comparison to Goku's and Vegeta's in Dragon Ball Super. In fact, they wouldn't even be a percentage of a percentage of a percentage of Goku's power in his base now. That's how weak they are in comparison to Goku. Yet if you go back to the God of Destruction tournament, Kaba in his base is confirmed by Vegeta himself to be just as strong as Vegeta in his base. Now this isn't Vegeta from the Saiyan saga that was already one of the most powerful beings of the Saiyan race. I know it had just been destroyed but he was still considered one of the strongest. It isn't from the Namek Saga where he increases power even further. It isn't from the Android Cell or even Boo Saga. This is post Battle of Gods Whis training. Now after the Boo Saga, Goku and Vegeta were already considered two of the strongest fighters in the universe. But after being brushed aside by Beerus, which concluded in Goku attaining the Super Saiyan God form, which he later absorbed the power of that form into Super Saiyan and then later on in the series into his base where Vegeta attained God Key without the use of the Super Saiyan God ritual and actually surpassed Goku. Goku even makes the comment when he first turns up on Beerus's planet that Vegeta has surpassed him. Yet beyond that point, Vegeta and Goku then fight Golden Freezer and then even train in the Room of Spirit and Time for three years before entering the God of Destruction tournament. Now despite Vegeta getting the better of some of the exchanges, Kaba manages to match base Vegeta in a Gallic gun struggle, which incites Vegeta to turn Super Saiyan, but Kaba cannot do so himself. So how is Kaba this strong without attaining Super Saiyan? or even ever receiving the Super Saiyan God Ritual. Well, we find out some interesting details just before this tournament happens when Kappa first meets Goku and Vegeta. We learn that the Saiyans there have taken a different path in life. They still are a warrior race, but they are actually heroes and they fight villains every day. This is what it says 
in the program. They fight villains every day. So it's not like they aren't fighting, they aren't training. They do plenty of that. We also find out that unlike Universe 7, that they have never been oppressed by the Freezer Force and they no longer grow tails. And the Supreme Kites of both universes have a conversation where ultimately we find out that the Universe 6 Saiyans have evolved differently. So why exactly have Universe 6 Saiyans evolved past the use of a tail? What is the tail for? The tail allows the Saiyans of Universe 7 to mutate into Uzarus, which basically increases their power tenfold and turns them into a giant ape looking creature. Now in the anime itself it never directly states that the Universe 6 Saiyans had tails but if you take the manga despite being a separate canonicity for what it's worth and at that time they were much more closely aligned to each other Kaba states that the Saiyans did used to have tails but a long time ago. So Universe 6 through their evolution have found a power level that they have become so prominent in terms of power in their respective universe that they no longer have need for these Uzaru transformations. Sure, the Uzaru transformations are only 10 times multipliers and even on top of the universe seven Saiyans, it doesn't explain why they are at Goku and Vegeta's power. But remember, evolution takes place over millions of years. It isn't a mutation. Sure, the transformation itself was a mutation, but it was clearly stated that they evolved differently, suggesting that it didn't mutate off their bodies. Like I said, evolution happens over millions of years. So for them to lose their tails, the devolution, if you can call it that, happened a long, long time ago. And since then, they've just gradually kept getting stronger due to not actually being oppressed. So when people come at you with Goku and Vegeta have trained for 40 years, Cabra and Khalifa have done nothing. Well, actually, the whole race in general has gotten stronger over a much longer period of time. You don't have to like it, but that's how it's been written. Then when you add on top of that, that Kaba is the leader of the Sadala army, therefore he is one of the best fighters on planet Sadal. Why would Chompa choose him for a tournament if he wasn't? Just before the tournament of power started, Kaba went to his former mentor, Renzo, to acquire him for the tournament of power. Now Renzo declined the opportunity and suggested his sister instead, who he stated had even more potential than he had. Now, Khalifla is no trained soldier. She's basically a very powerful thug. When you account for her being younger and less trained than Renzo, this suggests that Khalifla is actually a prodigy among her race. And she has literally proven that since then. And the story of Kale is basically inspired from that of Broly. And Broly was a freak of nature. Kale is a freak of nature. And these two beings form Kefla. Now, obviously, they have attained the Super Saiyan forms relatively easily compared to Goku, Vegeta, and Gohan. People seem to forget that Trunks and Goten have literally just been handed Super Saiyan. At the age of, what was it, seven and eight, without any truly intense battles, the Universe 6 Saiyans already have some of the requirements to become a Super Saiyan. They have very high power levels naturally. They just needed a trigger to be able to trigger Super Saiyan. Goku on Namek and all the circumstances that led to Goku getting Super Saiyan, for example him growing up on Earth and then ultimately seeing his best friend killed right in front of his eyes by Freezer, it was basically a freak accident that he achieved Super Saiyan on Namek and he's literally rolled with it ever since. Now Vegeta in the God of Destruction tournament literally got Kabar to transform into Super Saiyan in that exact same regard. Vegeta threatened to destroy Sadal. He had the power to do so and Kaba got angry and power came in response to his need to save planet Sadal. The difference between the Universe 7 Saiyans with their Super Saiyan transformation and Kaba is Kaba rationalised it, methodised it and found a way to teach it in which he did with Khalifla, a prodigy. And upon seeing Kale go berserk because she's a freak of nature, the need to stop Kale became so great that she attain Super Saiyan 2, but it wasn't until the tournament, until Goku showed her that she actually fully had control of Super Saiyan 2. So after Goku fights Jiren, attains Ultra Instinct, loses it, is completely out of stamina, he has to build back his power and he fights Kale and Khalifla. We see here that they are just simply brawlers and in a martial arts fight, they're nowhere near Goku's level. And whilst in base, Goku managed to fight off a Super Saiyan Khalifla. And in Super Saiyan 2, was managing to fight off both Kale and Khalifla at once until Kale got control of her Berserk form, 
in which it turned the tide a little bit. But as soon as Goku went to Super Saiyan God, he started to dominate both fighters again. Now, it's important to note that Kale and Khalifa were both in awe of Goku when he went to Super Saiyan 3. This suggests that Kale's controlled berserk form fits somewhere between Super Saiyan 2 and Super Saiyan 3. I would say it's closer to that 400 times multiplier of Super Saiyan 3 as it would have to compensate for the fact that in base she's probably weaker than Khalifa. It's been stated multiple times throughout the show that Khalifa is the stronger of the two before Berserk came along. Super Saiyan God, Goku eliminated Kale and Khalifa until they fused. Now guys, as Khalifa first appeared in base, that means she fused as Khalifa and Kale in base. Despite these Saiyans being incredibly strong in their base, it's still unlikely they were as strong as Goku in his base. But upon them fusing, they are actually stronger than Super Saiyan God Goku by quite some distance. Now, I personally wanted to see base Khalifa versus Super Saiyan Blue Goku, but she goes Super Saiyan. In fact, what appears to happen here is Goku actually closes the gap with Super Saiyan Blue. It's a much closer fight than Super Saiyan God Goku vs Base Kefla. This is proof once and for all that Super Saiyan Blue is a 50 times multiplier at least over Super Saiyan God. But against Super Saiyan Kefla, he is starting to lose. He realizes he cannot win in just Super Saiyan Blue, so he amps up the Kaioken. To what degree still remains a mystery. However, Kefla <laughs> knocks out. Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken Goku with a walloping kick to the head. Then obviously we see Goku reveal Ultra Instinct again in which he powers up further than he did even before against Jiren. and Piccolo mentions this but Khalifa goes Super Saiyan 2. Now there are many interesting things in this fight because Khalifa cannot land a hit against Ultra Instinct but when Goku hits Kefla, he literally causes no damage whatsoever, and he hits her multiple times. During this fight, Vados comments on Kefla's power and speed, but says that Goku's reaction speed is better. This is pretty much suggesting that Kefla in Super Saiyan 2 was as powerful as Ultra Instinct Goku. But unfortunately, you cannot hurt what you cannot hit. Despite what seemingly is a power advantage, she comes to the startling realisation that she cannot hit Goku with the normal methods of attacks. So she attempts a nigh omnidirectional attack. It's not true omnidirectional, but there are lasers going in all directions. Master Roshi even comments that if one of these lasers hits Goku, Goku is done for, even in Ultra Instinct. Even when Kefla feels she's got Goku within her sights when he's in midair, Goku finds a way to literally surf. Kefla's massive attack and ultimately eliminates her with a Kamehameha that literally pushed her off the stage. It didn't defuse her, it actually broke her earrings because it was such a close range attack which then diffused her. She didn't diffuse in the same manner that Goku and Vegeta did inside Buu and also against Merge Zamasu. Kefla is a monster in terms of power but in reality she wouldn't be anywhere close to Vegito Blue's level. Not only are Goku and Vegeta a lot stronger than both Kefla and Kale in their bases, they can both transform into Super Saiyan Blue, which gives them a massive advantage. There is no denying how strong Kefla actually is. There's even one point where she charges up a Ki Blast and claims that it could one-shot a universe. Now, remember guys, a universe in the Dragon Ball verse is actually a macrocosm. If she could do that with that very small blast, imagine what she could have done with her final attack that she tried to eliminate Goku with when she was at full power. A special attack from a full power Kefla is potentially a multiverse buster. So when you take into account the universe Seven Saiyans origins and how they've evolved along the way, and then the fact that Kale and Khalifa are both a prodigy and basically a freak of nature, their fusion amalgamates into one terrifying being that can even transform into a Super Saiyan 2. And when you add on Khalifa's desire to keep increasing her power, very similar in regards to Goku, it makes for a terrifying prospect. So even if it's not popular opinion, this is why Kefla's power makes sense and is stronger than you think. So guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Do you believe we'll ever see Kefla again in Dragon Ball Super's future? Drop your thoughts in the comment section. If you like my videos, smash that like button with a Kamehameha. Do not forget to subscribe and remember one very important final message. If you stay calm in any vexing situation, 
you're never becoming a Super Saiyan. If you love talking about Dragon Ball on a daily basis, I promise you this channel is for you. Make sure you subscribe to my channel to get all the latest content as soon as it's released.